Good evening and welcome. My name is Celeste Prescott, Public Information Officer with Southwest Incident Management Team 1. This is the Calf Canyon and Hermit's Peak fire update for May 25th. I'll give you some updated numbers. As I spoke about last night, we were not able to get an infrared flight last night, so we remain at 311,148 acres but I am happy to report we've moved up to 46% containment, and we now have 3,091 personnel assigned to the incident. I'm gonna open it up this evening with an overview from our Southwest Incident Management Team Incident Commander, Carl Schwab. Uh, good morning, uh, Carl Schwab, Incident Commander here on the West Zone. Um, you know, one of the things we've talked about, uh, we have three teams uh, managing uh, three different zones on, on the fire. And, and we do talk quite a bit and all across uh, the fire, making a lot of, lot of really good progress uh, over the last few days. And of course, the containment is uh, starting to show that. And we do have some uh, more critical fire weather moving in um, throughout uh, starting now and, and, and getting warmer and drier throughout the weekend. Feeling real confident. Um, that we are ahead of the curve on that. Still have a lot of uh, contingency lines going in uh, uh, that it would help out in case the fire does move. So things are looking good now, but we do have uh, some hotter, drier weather coming in, and and uh, you know that's uh, gonna sh the fire's gonna gonna move around a little, and and there'll be places that heat up and have smoke. But we do have a lot of crews and aircraft, and as long as we can access the fire, we'll, we'll continue to do good work. So. With that, we'll turn it back to Celeste. Thank you very much, Carl. And we're going to go ahead and keep it here on the West Zone for an operations uh, overview from Operations Section Chief Jason Coyle. Yeah, hi. Good evening. Before I go around the map, I'll, um, I'll let you know what was going on on the, on the dozer lines to the north there. So on the main north dozer line, they were able to uh, get up on top of the ridge and start working on that, uh, on creating that shaded fuel break that we talked about and that work is it's going to take a while it's going to take quite a while actually but it's continuing from east to west along that ridge system so with that we'll go to the map and talk about the rest of it uh, below there from the amole fire scar there on 518 near where 518 and 75 junction is the crews are in there that dozer line push is all the way up to about what was it called Gallegos? I think it's Gallegos Peak. Sorry if I said that wrong. It's not on the on this map, but they got the dozer push all the way into about here by the end of the night. Road gets narrower. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more difficult going forward. So they, I doubt we'll see that that much that speed of progress, but the progress is going to continue all the way across this fire scar through the Sardinas and up to the Luna Canyon. They're also working on getting this dozer line pushed down here across the top of the Luna, Luna fire scar with the intent of eventually tying it back all the way to down into Division Kilo. We added some black to the map, uh, areas of containment that, that contributed to that 46%, and those were primarily in the area south of Chacon. And, you know, it's just a, it's a, a good reminder that, that this, this slow work is, is actually making progress. 6%, 6.35, or 5%, 6.35 miles, 31 and a half miles of dozer line or of containment that was gained. So, you know, that's that's a good day. And they're continuing to do that work, recognize that the quicker that we get all this line secured, then the safer it will be for the, the residents to return to the area. And, and we know that and, and we're working to accomplish that. All right, going back out to the, the 518 road, a lot of amazing, difficult work has taken place all the way along these nine miles of edge and I'm happy to report that by this evening, it looks like they're gonna get that edge, the northern edge here tied all the way in back to this Hellespot 462. We're gonna to continue to patrol this, but being able to get that edge secured ahead of this, the wind event that, that Carl spoke to that we can expect in the coming days and the, the critical fire weather is a big deal. Going down the side, we're gonna to continue tomorrow to start looking at inserting people uh, to pick up this fire's edge and continue to, to work it down to the south. You know, given the wind event, we're going to be limited with helicopter activities and the ability to extract people, so we're going to have to be, um, you know, we're going to have to be very deliberate 
about choosing what actions to take in that area and also committing resources that deep where they may be able to be used elsewhere. But we'll make sure that we, we get a good plan before we implement tomorrow. Also, this dozer line is, they're about made the corner. We anticipate that by the end of tomorrow they'll get tied back in where the rock is north of Hickory to Peak the, and, and south of Ripley Point. And then that will we'll get the basic, the pioneer dozer line in we call it for the first pass. And then they'll start to work on, on cleaning up those fuels around it to make that more of a, a viable holding feature. So the other stuff that's gone around the, around the fire is the structure protection that's in place along the, the 518 corridor. Working to find that balance between having equipment available to reposition somewhere else and also making sure that if the fire was to come out, we can quickly redeploy and address the, the need to, to implement structure protection in those areas. And the reason we're doing that is you know, we did some modeling today where we introduced fire all the way along this, this, the northeast side of 518 in the model, not in real life, so in a computer. We put, we put fire on the ground right here and then simulated what that growth would look over the next five days. And, and what, it, what it validated for us is that this line location provides enough distance that once it's in and complete that we could implement actions off of it to, protect, to prevent that fire from going further no, north into the Rio Grande del Rancho drainage. And it also let us know that any in close work right in here over the next five days would probably have a low likelihood of being successful based on the rate of spread that we would see. So that just goes back to the, the, um, the approach that we take of making sure that we're being deliberate about our actions and that we're putting those lines in a location where not only can they be put in, but they can actually achieve the objective of having them there, which is to prevent the fire from moving across them. With that, it would be the end of the report. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. And we're going to turn it down to our partners in the south for California Interagency Incident Management Team 5, Operations Section Chief Alex McBath. All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm glad everybody can make it out this evening. Um, last night, I think I left off that I was going to talk about the wilderness more in depth, and I will at the end here. Uh, I have some pictures for you to kind of show you what our resources are dealing with. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to walk you around the fire real quick. Um, so the east side, we had some changes, and it was uh, Gascon, Upper Rosiata, Lower Rosiata uh, were in a set, and those have been changed back to a ready. So good news up in there. Uh, additionally, down, down around Mineral Hill, uh, El Barro Peak, uh, all the sets that were down in the southern portion were set back to a ready. So, so good news there. We feel the threat's been alleviated to those communities, and, uh, and, and we're, we're confident that the folks can go back to, to the ready stage. Now, I'll, I'll talk a little bit real quick about the so southwest corner here, uh, uh, Barrias Peak, the 80 tail 2 Alpha Delta Road, uh, that's all still holding. Uh, we did get quite a bit of heat coming out of the middle of this this afternoon. It threw some spots uh, right along the dozer line, not, not very far off of it. They were able to pick those up. Uh, we have plenty of aircraft uh, helping them uh, hold that 82 Alpha Delta Road. And so the reason for that was the wind was coming out of, out of the northwest. Uh, so anything that heated up in these areas uh, had the potential to throw spots. So uh, good, good work down in there with those resources, uh, picking up those spots, and, and that's still looking, looking like it's, uh, it's a valid, solid uh, line. Moving on up to uh, Redosa Ridge, and then the finger coming out of Bull, down into Bull Creek. Uh, there, is, there is still a lot of heat, and like I said yesterday, you're going to see a lot of smoke coming out of there. Um, as the fuels are drying out, there is a lot more activity. So uh, some of this fire has dug itself down into these drainages, making it hard to get to, and those fuels are burning out. Uh, the plan right now is the crews are down on this corner, on the north end of this finger, have, have got direct line all along that and are holding that uh, and reinforcing it. That, and that's taken a, a good group of our folks, the Hot Shots and Type 2 IA crews, um, and they're going to hold that. So that's looking, looking like it, it uh, gives us a, a really good holding uh, feature to really deal with this big um, horseshoe that's in there. So over the coming days, uh, I think I've said this, uh, you will see uh, continued fire and smoke 
and it may be uh, rather large columns because even though on the map this doesn't look all that large, that's over almost 1,500 acres in there and that's all burning. So there is going to continue to be smoke for the coming days coming out of that area. Um, so moving on up to, to Elk Mountain all along the, the fire line, everything's looking real good. So that puts us up into the wilderness, and I want to show you a few pictures that, of an overflight we did yesterday to kind of show you the fuels, if you're not familiar with the area, some of the fuels that uh, the firefighters are dealing with and what we uh, are trying to find pathways through to uh, get some line on this fire. So if we can go ahead and put the video up. So what you're looking at is the blowdown areas along Hamilton Ridge, which is one of the main ridges from, uh, from the south on up to the north. And all that gray in there that you're seeing is just all blowdown that's in some places overhead high. The gray trees you're seeing, those are all snags. And you can see the density of those snags and what firefighters are going to be working in is they they, they look for uh, opportunities to, to get line put in. And this is just one piece of the total Peca, Pecos River shed. Uh, the whole thing is full of this. So as you can see, there's meadows up in there that uh, give us some opportunity um, to get away from this, this major blowdown. Um, but those are far and few between. So I'm going to show, let's see, we got the picture up. So this is, this is what it's like, that picture showed what it was like next to the fire and then also on some of, some of our uh, contingencies or fallback lines. So what we've done is um, we finished up line from Elk Mountain uh, down the ridge all the way into Holy Ghost. Uh, that's an all, uh, a contingency or fallback line uh, to keep this Bear Creek from moving south. Bear Creek has a lot of heat in it and it's dug in deep and the crews aren't able to get into the Bear Creek drainage down in here to, to go direct on it. And a lot of that blowdown is what this is burning in right now. A lot of resistance to control, which means it's really hard for firefighters to get in close. It's just hot and, and it doesn't stop burning. Even when you put aircraft on it, burns right through the retardant or the water and, and continues to munch on down the hill. Um, we have line from uh, the campground uh, at the wilderness boundary to the north all the way down to Holy Ghost uh, following the Iron Gate Road. That is in and complete and they're just reinforcing it and prepping it and making it a little stronger but, but that line's in. And we have crews that have started up Hamilton Ridge. Now what we're planning on doing on Hamilton Ridge is this is a, a long ridge that runs all the way up and ties into the, to the divide up there at uh, Hickorita Peak, Little Hickorita Peak. And uh, this is a continuous ridge, and so that's usually a really good holding feature. That's usually a no-brainer for the firefighters. Put some line in there contingency-wise. That way when the fire starts, uh, starts to come that to the west, if it should, uh, they have a place to easily access the fire and to uh, make a stand. This particular ridge, as, long, as well as all these other ridges that are going uh, up to the divide are just covered with that timber blowdown that I just showed you pictures with. So they're really, they're really gonna, it's gonna take a lot of time to put this in and or to drop into uh, better opportunities as they find them. It's gonna take, it's gonna take a bit. Um, the good thing is, if it, when you hear weather um, and you listen to the weather, most of the wind for the next seven days is out of the west. So with this alignment that we have currently on our edge, it came over the skyline and the wind's blowing it back into itself. And it's in a backing configuration, meaning it'll, it'll continue to back down but not very quickly, even through that blowdown. Even though it's hot, it's not gonna go out, it's gonna keep back in day after day after day. Um, the winds are trying to push itself back in there and that's, it, it's not allowing it to get up and, and really go. So that's the good news. Um, the other portion that we're looking at, and we have crews trying to validate, is uh, uh, a line coming out of Cave Creek 
up into the old Horosco fire scar and then up to the divide. And, and they're really taking a look at that. Um, and avenues through that old fire burn and possibly using that as, a, as a, another line to back up what we already have because the blowdown, which is the trees that were bug killed and the winds hit it, fell on the ground, um, has really, really high fire behavior uh, component to it once it gets fire in. Uh, it's crisscrossed, it's all on top of itself, and like I said, some of that stuff is piled over overhead high. So we are still looking for other opportunities, but our main priority is to try to keep this footprint as small as we can in, in, the, in the watershed. Uh, we know how vital this watershed is. Uh, we know the recreational opportunities that occur up in that watershed. Um, but I just wanted to show you a couple of those pictures and slides so that you know uh, what we're facing there. So with that, I'm sure there'll be some questions and I'll answer them as they come in. Thank you. Thank you, Alex, for that very detailed uh, report out. Those pictures and video really help explain what uh, you guys are up against. With that, I'm going to send it over to our partners on the east for California Interagency Incident Management, Meet, Management Team 2, Operations Section Chief Keith Garola. Good evening. <clears throat> the uh, weather that we've had the last four days is really uh, attributed to some good work on the north end of the fire where we've had uh, uh, the remaining heat. If you can see the map here, you can see that we're able to put some more black on the map. <clears throat> That's uh, contributed to all the uh, hard work that the crews did when the uh, humidities were high and a matter of fact with, with the precipitation we had. So we're very confident in this area that this area will be contained. Uh, we still have a little bit of open, not open line, but we still have some line that we're still watching uh, to ensure that with the winds coming that uh, nothing is pushed out. But again, feeling real confident on the entire east side here that uh, this portion uh, will all stay contained even with the winds. Some good work uh, again up on the north end uh, with all the uh, secondary lines that we have uh, that the crews have been putting in uh, the last uh, week and a half or so. Um, again, improving the uh, um, line on top of the ridge just west of Angel Fire. And again, the crews continue to uh, monitor around all the structures uh, to the uh, east here. Um, a great, uh, like I say, just a lot of great work and taking advantage of, of the cooler weather that we've had up here on the northeast. And a report. Thank you, Keith. That's some great news coming from the East Zone. I'm going to go ahead and turn it to our fire behavior analyst, Stuart Turner. Good evening, Stuart Turner. I'm the fire behavior analyst for Southwest Team Number One. As a fire behavior analyst, what I do is I predict what the fire is going to do, very much like a meteorologist does for the weather. So let's take a look at the weather real quick and see what's uh, happening there. That's going to be the driving factor for us for tomorrow. And let's see here, let me get that up. There we go. So looking at the matrix here, we can see that uh, we still are in that transition period. We're seeing the weather slowly turn to more hotter and drier. So temperatures are coming up, the humidity is coming down. That means the fuel beds getting a little bit more receptive. And even the overnight humidities are not recovering as nicely as they have been in the past. So those fuels tend to stay a little bit drier through the night. And then the winds are starting to come back again. So we're getting those 13 gusting to 24. But the nice winds tomorrow are going to be out of the northwest, which we've been experiencing for the last couple of days. So that's going to be very favorable uh, for most all the fire tomorrow. As you can see on Friday, we make a good hard transition that day, we get into some fire weather. Although the winds aren't as strong as they have been in the past, they're starting to increase. And that's going to start driving the fire behavior even harder. As we get into Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, we really transition. The wind speeds get up there, the gusts will come back, and those are the days where we stand to not be able to fly any of the aircraft, which would be very difficult to make any kind of control on any uh, escapes or spot fires outside of the line. Let's go right to the map, and we'll see um, what... Uh, I think's going to happen here. Let's start down here on the south. 
and we'll go around clockwise. So we saw the two fingers that Ops talked about. The lower finger has the donut hole inside the middle there. That's just going to continue to burn out. Don't be surprised if you see a small column come out of there tomorrow. That's a very real possibility. Same thing with the horseshoe he talked about. Once again, I do believe we probably will see a, a column come out of there tomorrow. Remember, these fuel beds are now very receptive, probably the most receptive they've been in the last three or four days. So any kind of embers, any kind of wind getting in there will initiate uh, rapid rates of spread, uh, very active to extreme fire behavior. And you talked about a uh, the spots getting across the line here. Some of those spots are from torching trees. What I mean by a torching tree is a, a, a tree catches on fire and the entire tree is engulfed in flames. Although the bowl and many of the limbs don't burn uh, up, they do catch on fire and all the little pine needles and, and small twigs catch on fire and those consume. As they do, it creates a great deal of heat throwing embers high into the air. If that happens on a ridge or a high hill and the wind catches it, those embers can loft and float out across the line and land in that receptive fuel bed. And tomorrow that receptive fuel bed is probably the most receptive that's been in those last uh, three days. So. Uh, spotting is a very real possibility, especially with that northwest wind tomorrow down here in this lower finger and the upper finger into the horseshoe. Not expecting any perimeter growth here tomorrow. Any spots outside the line with the aircraft still flying tomorrow and the crews right there should be able to pick that up without any trouble at all. So not considering that being a problem for tomorrow as we come all the way up. Uh, along the west side, that's looking really good. Don't think we'll see any perimeter growth. Remember that northwest wind will help push some of that back into itself, so it has to fight to get out. As we get up into the wilderness area, that is a little bit different. Uh, more activity up in there. That's not being contained or controlled, so that's going to still move around. However, that wind it has to fight against that wind, which is going to be a good thing, so it's going to limit the growth. Most of that growth in there is going to be driven by the slope, the topography in there. So the fire gets established low on the slope. It likes to go up the hill. So that's what's going to drive the fire. A lot of that's going to fight that wind. So it wants to go uphill, but the wind's trying to push it back downhill. So it limits the spotting and makes for slow growth. But that will continue to grow in that area. Not expecting much growth. Above that, until we get up into the Angostoria area, you heard operations talking about the crews working in there. Very favorable winds for those folks once again tomorrow, not expecting any spots. There may be some sleeper spots outside in the green that come alive tomorrow, but that's a very low possibility. Uh, once again, should be a very good work day for those folks, not anticipating any problems there. As we come around to the Chacon area, here again, that northwest wind does help those folks quite a bit, not expecting any uh, perimeter growth there. Down on the 121 corridor, things are starting to quiet down. You'll still see a little bit of smoldering inside there, some lingering smokes perhaps behind uh, the homes up on the hillside, but I don't think we'll see perimeter growth in there anymore. And then as we come around to the top on the northeast, that's all getting control, um, contained, so I'm not too concerned about that. That's not going to be moving anywhere, and those northwest winds will be very favorable. As we come down the east side, once again, the northwest winds will test this a bit. It's withstood a lot of testing. I'm not anticipating any issues down the entire east side. I think that's going to hold strong, and that brings us back to where we started on the south. The northwest winds will once again test this, but here... We've tested that many, many times, and it's withheld, and thus the reason they're changing the status of evacuations in there. Now, lastly, on the on the map here, remember the entire interior has a lot of unburned pockets of fuel. Those are starting to dry out, and those will become more active tomorrow. Don't think they'll cause any issues, but you probably will see some more um, uh, columns or smoke coming out of there. And then yesterday we had a little bit of lightning scattered around the area. Tomorrow we may see some of those come alive. We call those sleepers where they strike a tree, they smolder for a day or two, and then wake up and start uh, burning or showing themselves. Uh, don't anticipate any pro control problems for any kind of sleepers tomorrow. 
uh, with the aircraft flying and the number of crews we have hanging around, uh, they should be able to pick those up pretty good. So once again, continue the transition. The fuel beds are receptive and ready to burn. Uh, the big thing is there'll be the limit on the wind, so I don't think we'll see a lot of perimeter growth until we get into uh, the weekend. End of my report. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Always good to hear some more good news. I'm going to go ahead and turn it now to our law enforcement officers who have uh, made more time to come talk to you guys. We're going to start with San Miguel County Sheriff Chris Lopez. Good evening, everybody. So again, um, in hearing the reports, we've had uh, several days now of good weather. Uh, which has enabled the team to be able to do a lot of good work, especially on this southwest corner that we continue to deal with. Uh, with that being said, I've been getting a lot of calls and, and questions and, and concerns as to why we haven't opened up any areas on that Pecos corridor. So I kind of wanted to start with that. <clears throat> as you heard from, from the operations uh, uh, report, you know, they're, they're still working on, on ensuring that that line's secured. And as we move into uh, into our, our extreme weather conditions once again, I think we're going to really get to see an opportunity if those lines are going to be uh, able to hold what what's going to be presented. The good thing is, like they're saying, is that we have those west southwest winds which are pushing back into the fire. But as we've been dealing with this, as some of you guys who have really been paying attention, we have had those awkward days where we've gotten that easterly wind which has caused us problems. And so um, I, I can assure you that we're in conversation. Uh, uh, very frequently with with the incident management team and and um, you know we want to get everybody back in as soon as possible but but safety is our primary concern and we want to make sure that we do that um, when we do that that it's safe for you to go back especially in terms of what we're dealing with uh, with egress I know that's a big issue in in, uh, in the upper canyon as well as in in those areas of, of uh, bull Bull Canyon, Cow Creek, and Los Colonias, uh, upper and lower. So um, all those areas, I mean, we're really watching out for them, and we're really trying to to get people back in there, but we're just not quite there yet. So um, you know, again, I ask for your I ask for your um, patience. I, I totally understand and and get that you know some people are getting frustrated. It's hard to be away from your home. I know um, there's been plenty of of our our citizens in San Miguel County that have have went through those hardships as well. And, and, and we're going to do everything we can to make sure that we get you back in as soon as possible. So um, <clears throat> some of the stuff that we've been doing to alleviate that is now that we've had a few good days, we've, we've, uh, uh, if the request is adequate, we do provide an escort in there for 10 to 15 minutes to get you in there if operations deems it safe to do so. Uh, and you can do that by calling the San Miguel County Sheriff's Office and then we will work with operations to see if that is something we can or can't do depending on what's going on that day with fire behavior, fire weather, fire operations, and also manpower. Um, <clears throat> and of course our number is 425-7589. Uh, uh, That's 505-425-7589. Um, and remember, you know, as we start getting into extreme fire weather, um, the likelihood of us being able to do that is a little bit less. So just keep that in mind and be patient with us. And we'll continue to try and, and meet your needs as, as, uh, as they come up. Um, also, you know, we still have all of our resources in place. And we also have our website that's, that continues to be updated with all the newest releases, all the newest information. That's at uh, co .samiguel uh co uh, what is it co.sanmiguel.nm.us and then you go you click on the on the hermit's peak calf canyon fire uh link and that'll take you to uh, a bunch of different resources that are available for you uh the the number for that uh, also a, a hotline for you to call if you need information or assistance 1-800-432-2080 those are just some more resources for you all that are displaced or, or have questions or concerns, and we'll continue to address those as we can. So uh, moving on to the east side of the fire, we, uh, as you heard from operations, he mentioned it briefly, we were able to uh, downgrade some statuses today, uh, and that includes uh, uh, Rociada and Lower Rociada. Um, that also includes uh, San Ignacio, that San Ignacio corridor. Um, and also the Mineral Hill area, uh, which is San Pablo, um, Ojitos Frios, uh, San Jeronimo, and Mineral Hill. So all those have been downgraded to a ready. Uh, and so with that, you know, remember you're still in a status and you still need to keep 
keep an eye out and, and be aware of what's going on. Be aware of, of, uh, of, of any kind of hazards that might be out there, as I'm sure there's still a lot out there. Uh, fire weakened trees. Uh, and, and also they're talking about, uh, Stu was talking about, our fire, our fire behavior analyst was talking about um, smokes and stuff in the interior, which might be coming up. And we have been, uh, I don't think we've had too many now with the, with the good weather that we've had. But as things are drying up, I know I, I did see uh, two or three of them out there today myself and um, and we do get those calls so understand um, that we we are going to be seeing some of that stuff especially as we start seeing the extreme burning conditions uh, coming back on the on the on the map um, and and unfortunately I, I was hoping we were done with those but it looks like we have several of them in a row and that that includes the strong winds uh, and um, for us on, on the San Miguel side and, and the Pecos Corridor, when you see those uh, west-southwest winds, that, that, that's definitely helping us. It might not be helping other parts of the fire, but it's pushing back into itself. And so I feel confident that the team can continue to do the good work that they're doing and hopefully get us in sooner than later. Um, but of course, we have to err on the side of caution once again. Um, with that, we've also been working on, on uh, flood mitigation and response plans as we start to prepare for uh, the possibility of monsoons coming within the next uh, several weeks. Uh, so there's been a lot of work and efforts uh, in, in regards to that uh, with local um, and, and state and federal partners. As I kind of reported about a little bit a couple of days ago, that work has been definitely continuing. Um, and then also in recovery efforts for, for those areas that we've been able to get back into uh, with both with the uh, uh, with our partners and also with FEMA as they continue to ramp up their efforts and provide assistance to those that have been um, uh, displaced um, and especially for those that have been displaced on a long term. So we, we are working on all of that on a continuous basis. I can tell you it's been uh, pretty busy. I mean, I mean, we've been having a lot of meetings and a lot of uh, pre-planning and a lot of planning and a lot of work on the ground as well. And, and uh, you know, I hadn't mentioned it in a while, but, th but there's just a lot of different partners that are working together uh, from the incident management team to law enforcement. I mean, we still have uh, uh, several of our partners out there, state police, Game and Fish, my guys, uh, the Mora County guys, um, our EOCs, our, our National Guard, our, our state EOC, uh, and that's just to name a few just right off the top of my head, the city of Las Vegas, they're still working diligently to, to plan and, and prepare for what might be coming. Um, and so I just wanna assure you that we continue to work and we're gonna, and we're gonna continue to do everything in our power to make sure that we're able to, to serve you the best that we can and keep you safe out there because that's our main priority. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sheriff. And we're going to turn it over to Mora County Under Sheriff Amrick Padilla. Thank you, Ms. Prescott. First and foremost, I'm going to start off by thanking God. Look at this map right here. As we look at it, the black line continues to grow. Hats off today to the operations team over there in the Chacon area as well. I know they've been working diligently and hard and tirelessly and it, their work is showing, that black line is growing. So hopefully, you know, it continues to grow. With that being said, I'm gonna direct your attention over here to some of our polygons. If you could see right here on the Golondrinas and Watros and Fort Union area, those polygons have changed to, uh, to the red, and that's gonna be to the ready status. Like Sheriff Lopez had stated, up in the upper Rociada area as well, has been changed to the, to the red and ready status as well. After having some very good discussion with the team and with uh, sheriff, the sheriff from Taos County, Jerry, we've been able to discuss and, you know, it's safe enough for him and us to open up the main corridor of 518. So there's no longer a roadblock right there. So 518 from Taos all the way through Las Vegas is currently available and open. So there's, there's no need to go around through Black Lake, through Angel Fire, and come down through 434 as well. We've been having some very good discussion, and hopefully in the near future, I see it coming up on the roadblock on the 121 and 518 intersection. Hopefully, if everything continues to go the way it's going and going well, we're going to be having some very, very good discussion here. And I hope here shortly and very soon, we're going to be opening up those areas, God willing. 
Um, just to, that being said, there's, all, there's also power. Power has been reestablished up to the 121 in the Chacon area for those individuals that have been ascertaining of that type of information. There is power. So hopefully, if need to be and it's safe enough, we're going to start doing escorts for those individuals that need to get in and assess to see about their freezers and go assess their property. If it's safe enough, we will do an escort into 121 and then escort you back out. With that being said, I know our county commission, our county manager have been in very deep discussion with other partnering, partnering agencies, FEMA, everybody else that's involved with this flood mitigation. So just for your information, that has not been swept under the rug, I know. We're still dealing with the fire, so after all this, and hopefully once all this fire is said and done, we'll be able to start focusing our resources and, and our attention to those to those areas for the flood mitigation as well. Um, with that being said, I, that concludes my report. If any questions, comments, or concerns do arise, I'll be sticking around to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amrick. And now we've got Taos County Sheriff Jerry Hogriff. Good evening, Taos County. Um, we had some good news today, and I want to share that with you. Uh, the corridor here in Ingestora uh, 518 is open. Uh, we had the closure at Sipapu Resort and at the Mora County Line. That's all been reopened now for through travel. So folks that live in Mora that need to travel to Taos for work and other things, you can do that again. I know it was an inconvenience. I also know it was the right thing to do to keep that closed until today when the fire crews could really address uh, this line in through here. Uh, a lot of good work has happened over the last few days. Uh, you've heard everyone much smarter than me say that as well. And uh, it's true, it's true. They've done a fantastic job. The, uh, as of about an hour ago, the electricity has been uh, restored back uh, along this area as well. Um, so folks, you can repopulate. Now, you just stepped back from green uh, to the yellow, that's still set status. This could change. Something could change in here and we have to re-evacuate. They've got still another window for uh, good fire suppression activities tomorrow and I don't think we're going to see any changes in there. The changes I want to see is back to red and then the red to gray for preparedness. And I want to speak just a moment on that. Everything you see in the Taos County area that's gray is still preparedness. You still have time. Cut the limbs, cut the grass, haul debris away from your house, move the firewood away from your porches and things like that. Make your home more defendable in case of a new start. We're still concerned about a new fire start in any of these gray areas throughout Taos County. Um, loads and loads and loads of debris and limbs has been hauled off to the uh, transfer stations and that's fantastic. We love seeing that. Um, with that, I don't have anything else to report. Just kudos to the incident management team and your Taos County management team uh, for all the hard work that's gone into suppressing this to date and more to come. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff, and we sure appreciate your continued support and cooperation. And I'm going to turn it over to the Colfax County Sheriff, Leonard Baca. Uh, good evening, everyone. This is uh, Sheriff Baca over in Colfax. Um, just want everybody to know we had another good meeting. Um, things are definitely uh, changing uh, over here. Hopefully, we can downgrade some other statuses within the next couple of days. Um, as everybody said, there's been a lot of a good weather and they've been able to do a, a lot of good work um, getting those contingency lines and, and uh, getting all these structures protected. Uh, I want to thank all of these teams and all the uh, every firefighters um, for all their hard work and what they're doing. Um, with that being said, we're coming into Memorial Weekend, so through Colfax County and into uh, some of Taos County with Sheriff Hogriff, we're going to be having a, a lot of uh, motorcycle traffic uh, and a big rally. So I want everybody out there listening to be aware of that um, and to slow down. There is a fire camp 
that is in uh, Eagle Nest right there on 64. Uh, those are some narrow roads and they'll be traveling uh, up and down the canyon. So we'll just be aware of that and slow down. Uh, we don't want to have any accidents over the, the holiday weekend. Um, and uh, with that, there's uh, I have nothing else to report for Colfax. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. And that concludes our presentation for this evening. From what I understand, there's quite a few individual questions, but not uh, any overarching questions to address tonight. And I would like to thank all of those that have taken their time out. I know many of you have joined us almost every evening. We do appreciate it, and we hope to see you here again tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. Until then, stay safe.